Hey there everybody, Coach Brandon here today with Coach Graydon. And today he's going to be helping me show you guys arm triangle variations. Now, I call it arm triangle variations just to kind of simplify it and put everything into one clean box. Um, but there's multiple ways to do these. Any, we're calling this anytime we have an opponent who has one, their head and one of their arms stuck like so, and we figure for our arms around our head and arm for the choke. Okay, there's a lot of different angles you can do that at. Um, the two that we're going to cover in more detail today are the anaconda and the dars. I'd say those are the two of the most popular. We'll look at a seated arm triangle as well, which is a little less common, but still a great submission. And uh, I'm hoping that we can squeeze in uh, an arm triangle from the top position, mount side control, like the traditional arm triangle as well. It doesn't really fit in with the rest of the front headlock game, but since we're working on arm triangles, this seems, it seems like we should put it in there. So we're gonna start off in the kneeling front headlock, and we're gonna start off talking about setting up our arm triangles from there. First, I'm gonna show you guys how to do one basic arm triangle from the kneeling front headlock where our opponent remains on their knees. And then I'm gonna show you how to do some other front headlocks where we're first gonna roll our opponent through, breaking them down to an unathletic position. And then once they're in an unathletic position, we're gonna finish locking the choke up and finish. Um, and then when we finish, you'll see that my favorite way to finish is to step over to the mounted position and finishing from there. I think that's a really good way to control your opponent's hips uh, and torso so they don't move around and alleviate pressure. You can stick them in place, pin them in place while you apply the pressure to the neck. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started on our basic anaconda using just a palm to palm grip first. Okay, I'm gonna have great on this side and over here. Come up to the camera. So we're going to start off front headlock position here. I've got the elbow drawn forward. Now, when would we use this position? It's going to be based on Graydon's primary defensive arm on the position of this arm here. If Graydon's arm is back retracted to his hip, it makes more sense for us to go to the high wrist position and start working our guillotines that we've been working. Sometimes Graydon will try to wrestle with me. He'll try to wrap around my hips and wrap around my legs. In situations like this, arm triangles don't really work very well because my body is keeping Graydon's arm away from his neck. If I try to push his elbow close to his neck to close his neck off, I can't because his arm is stuck here. So when Graydon wraps around my leg and around my body and, and leg and body like this, I typically go with arm and guillotines where I can fold my wrist around the neck and I can start to apply pressure to the neck here. So when do we use anacondas and darces? Well, we can force darces in a number of scenarios. I'm, I'm gonna show you how to force the darce later. One of my favorite situations to work the anaconda is when I have an opponent with posts on my hips. When I have an opponent post like this and they're starting to try to push themselves away. This becomes a very good time now for me to apply pressure to the outside of the arm get the hand off my hip but I can break his arm here to the inside. Now I can put his neck and his arm together where I can apply his bicep and his shoulder into the side of the neck and we can get that choking effect going. So if he's up around my body I don't I don't recommend anacondas or darces from here. I recommend darces and anacondas when we're in situations where he's either posting on my hips or if his hands are on the floor a situation where, I could, where I'll be able to take his hand in toward the center, okay? If his hand is here or here, I can get the hand into the center and get the anacondas and darces going. If the arm is out here, I can't get, I can't get the arm to the center. If his elbow is back, I can't get to my, my grips the way I want to, and it makes more sense to go after the neck. So I just want you guys to understand when to use what kind of attacks, which attacks are easiest based on your opponent's body positioning. Now let's go through the um, first initial palm to palm anaconda. So I've got my front headlock here. For now, I'm just going to have him have his elbows on the floor, hands on the floor, just yeah, like so. So from the front headlock, I'm going to take my right hand through, nice and deep, until I get my wrist into his armpit. My right hand is going to face me. My left hand is going to come here. I bend my wrist back at an angle like so, and 
and I put my wrist right here near the armpit. So my palm is facing up and away from me. My right hand comes through with my left hand positioned right here. My right hand comes through. I connect palm to palm. Okay, so I'll show that again, being a little more clear. I start off, my wrist comes up just like so. I go from the elbow up to the wrist. My wrist goes right to the armpit. My palm faces up and away. My right hand comes through. I connect palm to palm, and then I fold my fingers over my hands. Now the great thing about this grip, I love this grip for taking the elbow in. I'm gonna bring my left elbow down his arm like so, or my left wrist and elbow down the arm. And now I can use my wrist to pull his arm in. And I can take that arm in across the center line so I bring it in tight to his neck where we get our chokes. Now for the first palm to palm anaconda, I can actually finish a choke holding the grip just like I have it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop my left knee and I'm gonna put my head right inside the armpit. I put my head in and underneath the shoulder, underneath the armpit, just like so. Now my right knee is gonna come off the floor and I start to tilt my body, like I'm almost trying to drive my head underneath and I'm gonna take my right elbow back to my own hip, pull, squeezing my elbow, my right elbow to my own hip, rotating it back through as I keep pressure down on the back of his head using my shoulder. And that's our palm to palm anaconda. It's not the strongest submission out there, um, but it is an option that will work against people who are a little less skilled and don't, don't know how to defend it. So I have my front headlock. If I decide I want to go palm to palm anaconda, I take my left palm up to this position here. My palm faces away. My wrist is right on the armpit. My choking arm goes through. I go palm to palm. And then I fold my fingers over my hands. I bring my wrist and my left elbow down closer to Graydon's elbow. And now I can pull his elbow and his arm in across his body to break away, take away his base of support and to drive his arm into his neck. Now I'm going to switch my knees. I put my left knee down and I take my right knee up. And as I do that, I dive my head into the hole. Left knee down as my head goes in, my right knee comes up. Now I keep my shoulder driving down against Graydon's head. My right shoulder continues to drive down, and my right elbow retracts to my hip. And we have a nice tight palm to palm anaconda there. Something that my, Graydon might do from there is sit through to his right hip to alleviate pressure. So as I go through, he might sit through onto the right hip to alleviate pressure, to take pressure off the neck. But now it becomes very easy for me to posture up. I'm going to take my left arm, I'm going to wedge the pocket of the hips with my left arm and my left elbow. I connect my left elbow to my left knee. And I step around and now I'm ready to either take a V-mount if he turns and faces me, or if he turns and faces away, I'm ready to start putting my hooks in and taking the back. So the palm to palm anaconda, again it's a choke you should be aware of. If your partner sits through, they can alleviate the pressure on the choke. So it's not, a great, it's not the greatest high percentage finish that we're always looking for. But if he does sit through, that does expose his back. We just have to get our wedges into the right place, wedging the pocket of the hips, and connecting knee and elbow, making that V mount, that V frame, keeping his legs and hips out of our way. And then he, he can make a choice. He can either turn away from us and expose the back, or he can turn into us and then try to frame and recover guard. And that's the palm to palm anaconda. Next, we're going to go through the figure four anaconda, uh, but you're going to see that I actually use the same palm to palm grip to roll my opponent through to an unathletic position. I'll use my leg to, then to control their elbow to help me transition from a palm to palm grip to a tight figure four grip. And we'll go over some nuances of how to make that figure four grip as tight as you possibly can. For this technique, we're going to move away from the camera a little bit because we're going to be doing some rolling. We're going to need some more real estate. So from this situation, I have my front headlock. Maybe he's posting in my hips and I decide, you know, okay, 
it makes more sense for me to go front headlock than it does guillotine. I'm gonna take that same grip, left wrist in the arm at the pocket of the shoulder here, palm to palm, and we take his elbow in so he has no base of support. From here, I'm gonna put my head in the hole when I do my same knee switch. So my head goes in the hole, my left knee goes down, my right knee goes up. Now from here, I'm gonna get both knees off the floor into a tripod. I'm gonna take my right leg and I'm gonna step my right leg through, under, I'm sorry, my left leg. I'm gonna take my left leg, my apologies, my left leg, I'm gonna step my right, my left leg through underneath my right leg as I drive my head and my body underneath and I'm gonna pull great and through, bridging, putting him down onto his back and onto his shoulder here, using my palm to palm anaconda grip. Now right here, Graydon knows this is a bad thing. So Graydon's gonna start maybe, just like, so he's gonna try to frame with his arm, he's gonna try to push his elbow back and get out. Back. Yeah, so you'll see, the more I can keep his arm glued to his neck, the tighter the choke can be. So he's gonna frame his hands together, pushing his elbow this way, so it becomes very hard for me to lock a figure four, okay? So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna use my left leg to help. Graydon is gonna make a strong elbow, so it makes so it's hard for me to lock a figure four, and I'm gonna take my left knee. I'm gonna take the pocket of my left knee over his elbow, and I'm gonna use the strength of my leg to pull his bicep back to his ear. So even as he tries to frame with his two arms against my, the strength of my leg, my leg is gonna win that fight. My leg is stronger than his arm. Now my knee is gonna hold his elbow right where it is while I make a transition from a palm to palm grip to a figure four grip. I'm just gonna slide my arm forward, getting my wrist into the pocket of my left elbow here. Now my left hand is gonna come up high on the shoulder. People will grab their hand anywhere here. Don't grab anywhere. Bring your hand up high on the shoulder. I'll move my head out of the way, and I'll bring my hand up tight to the shoulder. And Greg will tell you that when I do that, it takes a lot of the space out of the arm triangle. When I'm here, it's not nearly as tight. So I move my head out of the way, I bring my head as high up on his shoulders as I can, and I lock. Now from here, there's two ways we can finish this. My favorite way is to go to the mount position. I'm gonna turn and look to the floor, scissoring my legs, putting myself up to my knees. From here, I step over to the mount. Now I'm gonna take my right elbow, and I'm gonna pull my right elbow back through the neck, rotating it in this direction as I apply the finish. So that's the mounted variation. I'll show you how to finish from the side too. Uh, let's go to a, a supine front headlock grade. So we're here. I capture the elbow. I make my same transition to my figure four. My head comes away from his shoulder so I can take my left hand high up on the shoulder. Now to finish, I'm gonna bridge my hips off the floor and I'm gonna walk and push my chest into Graydon's head as I walk closer to his hips. Now as I walk closer to Graydon's hips, that's gonna compress his chin to his chest. And then what I do to apply the finishing pressure, just like we did from the mount, I take my right elbow and I retract it, cutting it through the neck, rotating it around. Right now my wrist is moving, which alleviates the pressure. But when my wrist is caught in my figure four, my hips are up pushing the head in and I retract my right elbow, you get very strong choking pressure. So you can either, once you break your opponent down to this position, and you collect the elbow with your leg using what we call a leg assist. So if I ever refer to this in class or talk to you, I'll probably refer to this as use a leg assist. 
he tries to keep his elbow strong. I use a leg assist to control the elbow. And I lock my figure four. Now I can either stay on my back, bridging up, walk into him, and pull my elbow through. Or, if you can, try to step over to the mount. I'm gonna turn and look, and put my forehead and my nose on the mat. I scissor my leg so that my hips go belly down. I drive my hips up, and I drive, or I tripod up, and then I drive my left knee over, or I step my left leg over. And now from this position, I retract my right elbow for a strong anaconda choke. So that's our anaconda choke, palm to palm. I'm going to show it again from the beginning because you only saw the roll through once. So I'm going to show this again with the palm to palm using what we call the Olympic roll. So I've got the, fig the front headlock. I get my left hand in position. My right hand secures and now I'm going to suck his elbow in. My head goes underneath. Now from here, I scissor my legs, rolling Graydon through to this position. Graydon's going to be trying to make a strong elbow here. I collect the elbow with the pocket of my knee, collapse it, and my knee holds his arm in place while I transition to a figure four, getting my wrist in the crook of my elbow. Do not put your hand on your, on your elbow. This is not going to be strong enough. This is a very weak grip. As I put pressure, this is going to put a lot of strain on my fingers. I want you to get your wrist bone to the pocket of your elbow here. That's how, we're, that's how you know it's tight enough. So I use the leg assist. I come through pocket of the elbow. And then my hand comes up high on the shoulder. Now we can come up driving our chest in, we're trapping the elbow for the choke there. Or I turn chest down to the floor, tripod up, and step over and we retract the elbow here. And that's our anaconda. Next, I'm going to show the Darce choke. The Darce choke is another arm triangle variation, but this time it's locked on the other side. Just for demonstration, kneeling front head back right. A dark, an anaconda is where the hands lock and connect on the side of the arm that's in. In a darce choke, my arms are going to intersect and connect, let's rotate, on the side of the head. Here. Now we don't typically lock up the darce from here. Once again, I'm going to show you how we uh, roll our opponent through going here. Now we lock up the darts here. Once again, getting the hand high on the shoulder. Tripod up, step over, and we finish from that same mounted position. But just understand, the anaconda, the arms intersect on the side of the arm that's in. And on the darts, the arms intersect on the side of the neck. Now the darts and the anaconda look a little bit different, as you just saw. The breakdown was radically different. Let's take a look at the more common breakdown for a darts choke. Great. Um, let's have you put your head toward the camera. So we initially start off with our front headlock here. And I'm going to take my left knee in beyond graded shoulder line. I'm going to take my left knee behind his elbow here. As I do that, look at how I start to move around the corner. I go from a situation where I'm lined up like so with Graydon, and then I transition to a situation like so. Now when my left knee comes around the corner, behind his elbow, behind his shoulder line, I'm going to put my ear on Graydon's back. I don't want to be postured up. If I'm postured up, my left hand won't reach. So I, as I come around, I'm going to keep my head on Graydon's back, putting my ear on his back so I can reach through and get my hand to the far side of the neck. 
Now from this position, I'm gonna grip up. There are two grips that I like to use here. I will sometimes use a three finger grip where I come in and I will wrap my hand around with my last three fingers. So just my pinky, my ring finger, and my middle finger. And my thumb here splits my index finger and my middle finger. This is a very strong grip. This allows me to pressure my elbow down on his head, for me to lift my left elbow and drive my left shoulder into him. And you'll see later, when we talk more about the breakdown, I use my left leg as a drive leg. So my shoulders in underneath of his ribs is a fulcrum. I apply downward pressure on the head and I drive off my left leg to crunch Graydon's chin to his chest and knock him down. That's one grip. That's the three finger grip. Ear goes to the back, my hand shoots through to the far side, and again there's the three finger. Alternatively, you can use a finger to finger grip, and this also works for me pretty well. Again, my hand reaches through to the far side, and then I connect fingers to fingers, pulling down. Once again, I'm gonna pinch my right elbow down, controlling the back of his head. I'm gonna switch my knees, putting my right knee down, and taking my left knee up. Now that my left foot is on the floor, I can drive off my left foot to give me power to drive Graydon over. If I'm on my knees, it's all the arms. It's all arms. If I want to include the power of my legs, I post my left leg up on the floor. Now from here, I drive my shoulder in underneath of Graydon's ribs as my right elbow folds his chin to his chest and we force him down to his hip. Now, from this situation, I'm gonna shoot my left arm deeper, keeping my ear on his back. With my ear keeping on his back, my left arm is deep enough, or my left arm will be long enough to shoot deep, and I like to take the pocket of my elbow to his neck. So I try to reach through until I can get my hand starting to coming up. Now, Graydon is gonna be trying to posture his head. He's gonna be trying to lift his head that way so I can't get my left arm deep. What I'll do is I'll use my right elbow here and crunch in. If that's not strong enough, um, look up, strong head. If that's not strong enough, I'll come over and I'll take my right, my right knee over my right elbow and I'll use the strength of my knee and my elbow to fold his head in. Now with the head folded in, I can switch from my finger finger to grip to my figure four grip with, again, my wrist on top of the pocket of my elbow. We don't want to be too loose with the hand on the elbow or the hand on the bicep. I want my wrist in the crook of the elbow. Now, just like we did before, to really tighten this up, I'm going to take this hand high up to the shoulder. My head is in my own way, so I'm going to move my head out of the way leaning my head away, and then I take my hand up high on the shoulder just like so. Now for the finish, I'm going to lean my weight into Graydon, putting my forehead on the floor, and I come up to a tripod. Now from the tripod, I walk around, I step over Graydon's body, and now for the finish, I retract my left elbow through Graydon's right armpit. That's how we end up finishing a strong darts choke. Okay, so one more time. I start in front headlock. I perform a knee switch. I put my left knee down behind his elbow, behind his shoulder line. As I take my right knee up, my ear goes to the back. As my ear goes to the back, I shoot my left arm through using either a three finger grip or using a finger to finger grip. The choice is yours. I think the three finger is stronger, but it takes a little bit more time to set up. The, figure, the finger to finger grip, I think is a little, uh, uh, maybe not quite as strong as the three finger grip, but I think it can be made faster. I think it's a faster grip, so the choice is yours. Now from this position, my right knee comes in, goes down, my left foot comes up. 
and now I apply inward and downward pressure on his neck, on his head, with the intention of crunching his chin into his chest. Just like we do for the hook sweep, just like we do for the power half. Now I drive off my left foot, crunching the chin in and lifting my left elbow, my left shoulder. That rises and pushes him over. Now the first thing from here is Graydon is going to want to get back to his knees. So as soon as I feel him trying to get back to his knees, I put pressure on the front of his chest. Look at our tripod. If I stay on my knees, he's going to turn right back up, just like so. So I'm going to dump Graydon down. If my knees come off the floor and I pressure into him with my shoulder. Now when he tries to go back to his knees, it's not easy. Now from here, he's going to be trying to look up. I'm going to use my right elbow to crunch his chin into his chest. If I need to, I'll use my right knee to assist. I'll use my right knee to pinch in on his head while I make a transition from my finger to finger grip or three finger grip to my figure four grip. As soon as I make my figure four grip, my head moves away from his shoulder so my hand can come up high on the shoulder and lock and get as tight as possible. Now I tripod up, putting my head to the floor. I step over to the mount position, putting him flat on his back. And now from here for the finish, I'm going to take my left elbow and I'm going to retract it, pulling it back through his armpit. Through a very tight, dark show. There are some instances where you can finish the darts while still on your side. It is not as strong as the mounted finish, but because it happens enough, I feel like I should probably mention this, okay? If I have the darts, and he fights his way up back up to his knees, you can sit through, trap his head, his arm, between or underneath his head here. He wants to move his head away from my body and pass his elbow between his head and my body, your right elbow, bring it to the other side of my body. Yes, and that will allow him to get out of the darts. So from this situation, I want to keep his head pulled tightly against my body. Now when Grady tries to pass that arm across, it's not easy. Now just like we did with the anaconda, I lift my hips up, I walk into him, and I use my left elbow to retract, pulling through the armpit. If I do this, and Graydon starts to walk his hips away from me to alleviate pressure, I'm going to try to turn and look belly down, and I'm going to capture his hips and his legs using my leg, just like we did with the guillotine. We come up, and we finish once again from the mounted position. So I'm here, if I can't get the finish from here, I'm gonna walk, looking to the mat, bridging up and catching. All right, so we're here, and we're here. And we can try to finish the darts once again from that mounted position. So that's the anaconda and the darts. I'd say the two more common arm triangles out of the front, kneeling front headlock position. There is another one. Uh, it's called the seated arm triangle. I'll show you guys this one right now. Uh, this one, people often confuse with a guillotine because of the finishing position. It does look rather like a guillotine. But because the choking mechanic still involves the arm being pushed across the neck, it is still technically an arm triangle. Let's look at it. We're going to do the same gripping strategy we saw earlier, where I take my wrist to the shoulder, I connect my palm to palm and I take his hand in across the center line. Now with his elbow across the center line, I'm going to take my right knee in around the corner and I'm going to take my right knee to block his elbow just like so. So now when Grady tries to get his arm back, it's not easy. From here, I'm going to sit down to my right hip. My left leg is going to make sure I catch his hips. Here. And now from this position, I'm going to retract my right elbow through the neck. for another variation of the arm triangle. So this one is done from a position that looks very much like a guillotine, either seated with my leg over the hips or sit by. 
and the finish mechanics are going to be me taking my right elbow and retracting it and rotating it, pulling it through the net this way. One more time. I have my front headlock. I make my palm to palm grip. I pull the elbow in. Now from right here, I'm going to bring my knee up to the outside of the elbow, here. And now I like to commit my hips to the floor as my left leg captures his hips. Now from here, keeping everything nice and tight, I'm going to pull my left elbow through the neck. And we have another strong way to finish uh, uh, an arm triangle using a palm to palm grip. This is very similar to the first palm to palm anaconda we saw, except this time we're sitting through to our hip and using our leg and hip to block the elbow rather than our head. We saw in the first one we used the head to block the elbow. Here, and I choked him right here. In this one, we block the elbow with the hip and we choke him here. Now, as a bonus content, I'm going to show you guys um, an arm triangle done from the mount position or from the top, top position. Give you guys some of my thoughts on that. That can be a very tricky submission to finish. And in some ways, uh, it's a mystery that still eludes me sometimes. I'm sure we've all gotten an arm triangle in top position and struggled and squeezed and tried to find any which way to, to put pressure on the neck and your opponent, when they strongly defend, can just sometimes find space. My contention is that when we put on the arm triangle from top position, rather than putting it on in a way where my elbow is so far outside my shoulder, I want to mimic a situation like all of our other figure four chokes. Rear naked chokes, anacondas, and darces. I want to mimic a situation where my elbows are inside my shoulders, where they're in a position of power rather than trying to squeeze in a situation where my elbow is outside my shoulders and now it's a lot weaker, okay? It's a little trickier to do, um, but I found some ways to do it. Let me, let me show you. So he's gonna lay down in the mount. Um, I'll show it this side, I suppose. I get a, a right arm cross face and my left arm comes here inside the elbow. We first need to use a mechanical trick called a ratchet, okay? My left arm goes inside the elbow and I'm going to walk with my hand. Walking Graydon's elbow out and away from his body. Okay? Graydon is going to be trying to pinch his elbow back into his hip. He doesn't like that his elbow is being brought out and away. As he does that, I need to keep my hand glued to the mat. So that when he tries to pinch in, the friction of my hand on the mat holds his elbow in place. And then we walk and we pull with our fingers. If I take my hand off the floor, I'm going to lose progress. So it's very important that as you make this climb, that you never take the hand off the floor in an attempt to strain 